I'm Pony Sabaya, and I'm the Senior Vice President uh, and Global Head of Medical Affairs and Chief Medical Officer at Acadia. And um, Acadia's work in RET started in 2018 when we uh, had an exclusive licensing agreement with Neuron uh, Pharmaceuticals Limited to develop and commercialize trifenotide um, and uh, in Rett syndrome, as well as in other indications in North America. So this was then followed by our clinical development team uh, uh, executing on the phase three study, uh, which was pivotal uh, and led to the approval of trifenotide for Rett syndrome in the US in April of this year. So um, Rett syndrome is a rare disease um, that is, and there's a, typically a, a genetic mutation related to the MEP2 gene. And uh, it affects about 6,000 to 9,000 patients in the United States, of the 4,500 are um, diagnosed. And it's, it, it starts um, you know, at about uh, six months of age, usually the child develops normally, and then at about between 16 and 18 months, they start developing. First, just they start uh, not reaching their milestones, it stagnates, and then they regress in, um, in what they have learned, and they don't continue to develop along the normal time frame. First of all, there's a range of symptoms that these patients can present with. Each patient is very unique. It's vedra heterogeneous in terms of um, they can present with... Um, uh, problems with their hand use because they have this repetitive hand movements. Uh, other symptoms include problems with eye gaze, with communications. They can have seizures. They can also have symptoms in other, other systems like uh, problems with respiration. There has been no approved treatment by the FDA for the actual core, treatment of the core symptoms of RET. So it was an important milestone uh, with Acadia achieving approval of trifenotide for the treatment of RET syndrome in children or in patients two years of age and older in March. Uh, when the drug actually uh, was in the market in April of 2023, Acadia wanted to make sure that uh, clinicians and caregivers have the appropriate information, that there's access to the drug. So uh, we um, ensured that there was resources available to help support the launch, including materials and tools uh, for clinicians and caregivers that explained what trifenotide, or by its brand name, debut was. And um, also, uh, we uh, have a patient and support pro a patient and caregiver support program called Acadia Connect. That was very important because once a patient received a prescription, um, they are able to, and they enroll in Acadia Connect, they basically have a dedicated care team that helps them throughout the treatment journey. In addition, resources are available to help uh, with a personalized insurance, uh, um, help them get the insurance through a personalized approach depending on their circumstances. So these were all, the reason I mentioned these factors is this all led uh, to a, what we feel is a very, um, uh, I think a positive reaction from the RET community with uptake of trifenotide. It initially started with the RET uh, syndrome uh, academic uh, centers of excellence. And now, now we're about several months out from launch. It has actually now been, um, uh, has been good uptake in other uh, institutions, uh, children's hospitals and other institutions, but also uh, into the broader, uh, smaller uh, HCP practices. It's important to understand the first two studies uh, because they're, it's a continuum continuum of the scientific evidence. So as I mentioned, the, the study that led to its approval that was pivotal was the Lavender study. This was a 12-week randomized placebo-controlled trial where um, patients uh, uh, in the age range of uh, 5 to 20 years with Rett syndrome enrolled in the study. And the study showed both efficacy and safety, which led to its approval. Now, patients who participated in this study were then offered the option of participating in a longer-term study, which was called LILAC-1. 
This was a uh, study that was 104 weeks in duration and was open label so that all patients received trophenotide. And during this study, patients continued to show uh, improvement on the two primary endpoints, which was a caregiver rated scale called Rett syndrome behavioral questionnaire and a clinician's rated scale, which is called a clinical uh, global impression of improvement. So even in the open label, they continue to be improvement. And the safety uh, profile was similar to what was seen in the initial phase three study. Now we come to the third study, which was the information that was presented at the recent American Epilepsy Society meeting. And this was called LILAC-2. This is 32 months in duration and is also uh, all patients in the study received uh, trophenotide in an open label manner. There were 77 participants in the study, and 79% of these participants completed the study. Um, the mean age of the participants uh, was approximately 12 years of age. And uh, the objective of the study was to look at long-term safety as well as the efficacy. And uh, with regards to safety, the most common adverse events that were reported was diarrhea, COVID-19 infection, and the reason is because these studies were conducted during the pandemic, and then vomiting. And these were consistent, again, with the previous studies uh, in terms of the, of the tolerability, and there were no new safety signals or tolerability issues that were identified in this uh, longer-term study. With regards to efficacy, patients continued to show improvements in the two scales that I mentioned, uh, with showing benefits both from a caregiver as well as a clinician's perspective. In summary, LILAC-2 is a 32-month open-label study that evaluated the efficacy and safety of trophenotide over the long term. It demonstrated continued uh, efficacy of trophenotide, which was showed improvement in both the caregiver as well as a clinician rated scales. And at the same time, it uh, showed uh, no new safety signals uh, from previous studies over the long term. So the uh, Caregiver exit interview uh, study was actually a component of the LILAC-2 study uh, that I just described. So the reason we did this study was to really understand uh, the, uh, the benefits of the drug from the caregiver perspective. So it was voluntary and was offered at the end of the study, and 27 caregivers participated in the study. And the way the study was conducted was through phone interviews, which lasted approximately 60 minutes. And the interviews were conducted using an institutional review board approved um, qualitative interview guide. And during the guide, open ended, uh, as part of the interview, open ended questions uh, were asked of the caregiver about what they observed uh, in their child who participated in the study. And after the interview data was connected, thematic codes were assigned, and the data was then analyzed to really assess themes across interviews. And what the results showed was uh, caregivers um, identified benefits that uh, were, um, uh, were across a range of core symptoms. The most commonly reported improvements that were reported by these caregivers included improvement in engagement, hand use, eye gaze. Uh, some caregivers reported that their child had new words or new sounds. And this was in alignment with another important improvement that was observed, which is improvement in communications and also interaction with others. So this, uh, this is important because it really gives further insights and in what does this data mean beyond the efficacy and safety endpoints of what we already had in the trials. It gave um, us uh, to understand how do we translate these scientific measures into words from caregivers directly. And this is consistent with FDA's um, encouragement of the industry to continue to incorporate the patient and caregiver voice into drug development. And, and so we were very um, uh, pleased to be doing this and to be able to share this now with the broader audience at scientific meetings. So first, um, 
one component of the study was we asked caregivers, what is it that you are looking for, for uh, in a drug to help uh, with your child with Rett syndrome? And, and the, what we found was consistent with a previous um, meeting that the FDA uh, supported, which is a patient-focused drug development. And key areas that caregivers are looking to show improvement is in communication, in um, hand use, ability to walk, and in seizures. And what we have, well, what we found with the interviews with regards to what did the caregivers see with, uh, with, uh, by their child getting trophenotide in these trials is that they saw areas that were aligned with what the caregiver was looking for, including the ability to engage and interact with others, the ability to use their hands, communication. And this was important because um, for the caregivers, what does this translate into? First, for their child, it showed there's improved physical and social functioning, increased interaction with them as parents, but also others. But in addition, 54% of the caregivers who participated in the study said they had positive impact in their own lives in that, that they felt their family was happier. Um, there was increased ability to participate in social gatherings as a family and just the ability of the parents to interact with their child and have their child respond to them and others. Well, first, the trifenotide was studied in a rig rigorous manner uh, that led to its approval uh, by the FDA. Um, in addition, as can be seen by the two long-term studies, Acadia is committed to continue to expand the science because RET is a chronic disease. And so we want to continue to um, evaluate the benefits and the safety profile of trophenotide over the long term. As part of this, in addition to these two studies, we are continuing to um, study trifenotide in the post-marketing setting, in a real-world setting, through a study that we call LOTUS, which is currently ongoing. And this will continue to assess the benefits and the safety profile of trifenotide over the longer term. And we hope to be able to share some of this data in later in 2024. One thing we're really proud of at Acadia is not just right now that we've got approval for um, a drug in Rett syndrome, but we we are committed to continuing to look for other solutions, uh, not only in Rett, but other rare diseases. Also, what's really important is, you know, we're the first drug approved, but anytime one drug gets approved for a disease, other, other, there's pathway now, there'll be other investments. And in addition to Acadia, we hope other companies will continue to invest this in area because we recognize the uh, unmet needs in these patients and families. And we are very happy to be part of the solution um, for, for these uh, patients and, and families.